We have some new updates from Adobe for Lightroom. That's actually across all devices, desktop, iPad, and mobile. But how well does it actually work on the iPad? There's a lot of videos out there showing you how to use these new auto masking tools on desktop, but I wanna dive in on iPad because that's what I use to do all of my photo editing. Now Lightroom has had some local adjustment tools before. They've had a brush tool, a gradient, and a radial filter. But now we have a couple of extra things called auto masks where we can select the subject and select the sky to do additional fine tuning. What you had to do before was really use the brush tool to fine tune, zoom in, and really get exactly what you want. But Adobe has rolled out these new features using AI to get in there and really get you to a point where it's already selecting the subject that you want. So let's jump in. I'm gonna go to this first photo here. Actually, I've already done a couple of edits, so I'm gonna go back to the original for us. Well, gotta actually apply that. And the first thing that I'm gonna do with some of these photos is I'm gonna give them a good head start. I'm gonna use a preset and get them pretty close. Now, I'm not gonna do a full walkthrough of an edit. If you would like to see that, I do have some other videos here on the channel. I'll link a playlist up in the top for you. Let's jump in onto the presets. I've been using some from Byte Review. I think I'm gonna go with Matcha on this one. It just gets me to about where I want. So I'll go ahead and hit done. One thing I do like to do is because I shoot on a Fuji X-T3 for all of my photos, I like to use some color matching and profiles from Fuji. So I'm gonna go with the classic Chrome that does cool it off a little bit, but I can go back in here and warm things back up and maybe just boost that a little bit. One other thing that I like to add for my own photos is a bit of a vignette and just a tad of clarity and texture. Now, this is again, not a full edit. I generally go in and do a lot more fine tuning, but for today's video, let's go ahead and jump to those auto masking tools. So over on the right hand side of my toolbar, I have this option here, which gets me to masking. Again, this used to be a lot of our brush, gradient, and radio filters, and there used to be an option up in the top left to select one of those tools. Now you have this down in the bottom right, this plus sign, so if I click on that, you can see all of my options. Again, your brush, your gradient, and radio filters are all there, but what you can see now is a select subject, select sky, and color range along with your luminance range. Now, if you'd like to see me do videos on the color range and luminance range, make sure and leave that comment down below so I can see it. With this photo, let's go ahead and start with select subject. As you can see, my wife is down in the bottom left and there is some sky that we'll come to in a moment. So if I choose select subject, it's gonna take a moment to detect the subject and then go ahead and mask that for me. Now you can see it didn't get it 100% perfect. That's probably because in this scenario, my wife is pretty small in this photo. So what I'm gonna do is you can see the user interface here where you can see the mask and then what type of mask we're using. Underneath that, you have a plus and minus sign. I'm gonna go ahead and select that. You can either add to the mask if it didn't quite pick up everything you want, or in this case, subtract because it added some things that I don't want. You can already see here, there's some over on the mountain, as well as some of the additional mountain in front of my wife that we don't actually want. Once I select that, I am going to choose brush. And then on my left, I have a couple of tools to fine tune the size of that brush. I'm gonna go ahead and use that. And then immediately, if I use that, I can swipe over some of where that red, was, that red mask was at and erase that. And if I zoom in over here, I'm gonna bring that mask size down a little bit and just go in and erase what I don't want to be part of this mask. Now that we're close enough, I could obviously go in and fine tune this a little bit more, but I'm going to zoom back out so we have the full context. And you, one thing you want to keep in mind with these edits is subtlety. You don't wanna be going in here and pulling this all the way up and maybe pulling your warmth all the way because then it just starts to look unnatural. So we're gonna go ahead and undo both of those edits. And we're gonna come back and fine tune this just a little bit. So if I pull that exposure up just a tad, 
what you can see is I'm pulling attention towards the subject as opposed to the entire image being lightened or darkened and experiencing all of these edits. Now available to you are most of your tools. There's a couple of things that are not as detailed from a general edit, but you can go in and adjust your colors, adjust your lighting, as well as your effects, details, and other optics. So again, I'm gonna be very subtle here, probably call that good enough. I actually don't wanna to do too much here, just enough to make her pop a tad bit more. Now, if I hit done, you can see that there. If I just hold the screen, you can see the original photo. This is obviously the preset edits as well as this masking edit. And now to move to the sky, we're gonna go ahead and go back in here. You can see the first mask is still there, but I have the plus sign above it. I'm gonna go ahead and choose that plus sign and I'm gonna do select sky. Again, Adobe is gonna take a little bit of time to use their AI to detect the sky and then it's going to pop back with the sky selected red. You can see that it has picked up some of the mountains there. In this scenario, I'm okay with that. If I wasn't, I could go ahead, hit that plus and minus sign, subtract and paint over where I don't want the mask. But again, I'm okay with it in this scenario, just so that it blends a little bit as you go through the photo. Now, one thing I like about this photo is that there's a lot of detail in the sky that isn't getting picked up because of the preset we've applied. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull that exposure back. And then you can see up some of these clouds are now coming back into detail and you can see those just add a little bit more drama to this photo. Additionally, to have it contrast with the orange of the rocks, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of teal to that sky just for a little bit of color theory and having that pop. Now I can go ahead and hit done and that is our final photo for now. Again, I would do a lot more if this was a full photo edit, but I wanted to show you those two new auto masks, both the select subject and the select mask here quickly. Now, if you're finding this information helpful, make sure and subscribe because I have more tutorials coming out and you wanna make sure to be notified when those come out. Now moving to another photo, just to give you a better sense of how these are actually working, here again is a photo of my wife, this time at Zion. So I'm gonna go ahead, do the same thing and apply a preset. In this case, I'm going to use what I believe is pronounced Ramoon. From, again, these are from Byte Review. So I'm gonna hit done. In this scenario, I'm also gonna crop this a little bit and get my wife to be more centered. Also gonna go in and change this to classic Chrome and bring up that exposure quite a bit. Now, what I'm wanting is my wife just to, her shirt is a little teal because of this preset and it was actually teal in real life, but it's overdone in this photo. So I'm gonna go ahead, again, go into our masking, hit the plus sign and do select subject. And this time it's done a pretty good job of just selecting my wife and not selecting anything around her. So I can go and jump right into some of my edits. Again, I'm gonna have her pop just a tad more. Maybe bring my blacks down a little bit. And this time in color, I'm gonna cool her off because the rest of the photo is pretty warm. So I want her to look a little bit different, but I don't want her skin tones to be washed out. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of warmth back in there. And again, all of these are just minor edits. You don't wanna overdo this because if you start doing things like this, you're, it's gonna look unnatural if you start pulling those sliders to one end or the other. And honestly, that is about it. You can see how quick it is to be able to do these edits because there is the before and there is the after. And last one, another photo from Zion. This time we're gonna focus in on the sky because what happens when I go in and I add one of these presets, I'm gonna go ahead and use bubble T this time. When I hit done, again, I go in, I hit classic Chrome. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull up my exposure quite a bit because I wanna see a lot of that detail down in the valley. But I'm gonna try and pull some of my highlights back and again, in, just fine tuning some of these. The presets are always a good starting point, but you wanna make sure and do some fine tuning to make sure it fits the photo you're actually editing. Now again, in this scenario, the sky is probably a little overexposed. So I'm gonna go ahead and into masking, hit plus and select sky. 
And once it selects the sky, you can see that it has a little bit of the mountain range. Again, I'm okay with that because I know that that preset applied some edits to that transition space. But if I wanted to go remove those, I can just by clicking the plus and minus and brushing that out. But I'm gonna go in and pull that exposure back just a tad, some of those highlights and go into my colors. And in this case, I wanna add just a little bit of a purple magenta to that sky so it contrasts some of the other colors in the foreground. So again, you can see a before and after. Here's your before with the dark valley and then with the preset and some of that masking applied to the sky. Now I love that Adobe continues to bring these features forward, continues to innovate and gives us as photographers more tools to edit photos to our own style. And I especially love that they're making them available across devices because this is going to be extremely important to me as I try and level up my photography editing without having to go into things like Photoshop or Affinity Photo here on the iPad. So let me know what you think of these features down in the comments below, as well as features that you want Adobe to bring to Lightroom next. I know for me, I would love to see some HDR editing just be that much more seamless, panoramic editing, stitching, all happening here on the iPad. It's available in, in the classic version on desktop, but not available here. But until next time, I'm gonna go make something. I hope you do too.